right, you may be seated, everybody. This is Kimberly Tate, and we are so happy to be here. This is my amazing wife that has stuck by me through all these years and has given me a lot of beautiful children, many blessings, and helps in every way, carries the load. She's going to minister to you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good evening. I just stay with him for revenge now. <laughs> just getting even at this point. That's... <laughs> just kidding. How can you not love Ivan Tate? Right? I'm sure you all do. Well, I'm pretty messed up after that worship. I mean, that was... That was undoing. Beautiful, beautiful. Those are my two sons up here. Yeah. And your daughter and a beautiful other person I haven't met yet, but I hope I get to. Well, when you're in ministry, you're constantly changing because God demands that when you teach the word or you minister the word, that it changes you in order for you to be able to uh, empathize or love the people that you're ministering to because you know the price of the word you preach. There's a price to revelation. There's a price to getting in his word. He provides all things freely to us, but when we live under the authority of it, well, then it costs us our life, doesn't it? It costs us our life. And a lot of times the word is a mirror. And you're reading along and you're going, I know that one, I know, yeah. And then all of a sudden it's, ugh. It gets you, and you're like, whoa, wait, what? Where did I miss that word in that sentence? That's about me. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Well, I was reading along in Mark 14, and I was totally convicted. And I know God has it for us tonight to share. The sower sows the word. So simple. <laughs> it's going to hurt in a minute, but... <laughs> so far so good these are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown and when they hear immediately comes and Satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them in a similar way these are the ones on whom seed was sown on rocky places who when they hear the word immediately receive it with joy and they have no firm root in themselves, but are only temporary. Then, when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word, but the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And those, you remember we're talking about these, and now we're on those. And those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, 30, 60, and 100-fold. That's pretty easy to get, right? until God turns you upside down. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm on a trampoline trying to find that X when I land so I don't go off the tramp the next time the force takes me and the force takes us. And then all of a sudden he throws a flip in there. And I'm like, now I'm gonna find the X after this. But this is what God convicted me about. We have a orphanage in Guatemala 
And we've been in ministry for a long time. And we've known the rocky soil, the, the good ground, the, all these different soils. We've seen it in people's lives. We've seen it. We've ministered to it. There are kids at the orphanage that for 15 years, we're still talking about the same thing. I'm sure as pastors and ministers here, which you all are, equipped to minister because of the word in you, you, you see the same, hey, didn't we just talk about that last week? Didn't I just cry with you and God changed your heart about that and you're back this week with the same thing? Wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? There are times when I've heard the message on peace, right? And I'm going to have peace. I'm a hundredfold receiver, okay? I just, I'm an A student. I'm going to be a hundredfold receiver. So I hear the word on peace and I go home and it's time to go to sleep. And I'm like, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. I've got peace. I've got peace. I've got peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'll just fake it, right? But I've got peace and I received it. And by Wednesday, I'm like, oh, Lord, what about this? What about that? And the sermon was Sunday and I've lost it. And so I am also, I fit into this category. But the Lord told me he faithfully has sown in me since I was born again at 18. He doesn't not sow in me because I'm rocky. He doesn't forsake me because I'm thorny. He doesn't leave me because I'm worried because he's the sower of the seed. That's what he does. He sows his word in us, and then came the conviction, do I judge the ground before I sow? If you're rocky and rude, do I just walk away? Nice to meet you. If I find you're thorny, or man, it's the 12th time and you're still worried about that, go see her. Do I judge ground before I sow? Because I want to be a hundredfold receiver, I also want to have a hundredfold, right? Everybody I sow in, I want you growing. I want you changing. I want you getting the victory. I want to see the fruit. I, what? Wait a minute. That's not like Jesus. Jesus said the sower sows the word, period. Did you notice that? There's a period there. Period. It means you continue to tell the gal at McDonald's, God bless you. It means you go to Starbucks and say, you know, God has a purpose for your life and he loves you. Okay, you don't want to hear it today? That's all right. I'm coming back on Tuesday. I'm going to remind you. In love. You know... We don't get the privilege of looking good to God and to others and saying, look at my fruit. All my trees are growing. How's yours doing? That's not Christianity. Christianity goes, the scripture says, to rocky places and sows, expecting, expecting a miracle. Because the power isn't in the soil. The power, the life, is in the seed. Power is in the seed. Seeds go where no man has gone before, and sure enough. Have you ever looked at a crack in the sidewalk? Something's coming up, and you're like, how? How are you doing that? Seeds go where no man, no woman, no child can reach. 
but the word of God is the seed that goes into your heart, that goes into my heart, that goes into people's hearts where our personality, our dress, our relatability can't go because you didn't make them. God made them. God made him. He's never been unfaithful to me. When I'm hard and I'm stubborn and I quit, here comes another word. Here comes another seed. He didn't give up on me. He's working on that. He's cracking me up, right? Getting in there in that stony place and finding a place. And I brought some pictures tonight because I'm a mama. I have kids at an orphanage and illustration's the best way to go. We're all kids here. We're God's kids. So I brought you pictures to help you. And they are coming up because I sent them to my son and he faithfully sent them to the guy who's going to put them up. Yeah? Yeah. And yeah. That is a beautiful picture of our ministry in Guatemala, in Africa, but not the pictures I sent my son. <laughs> but those are nice. Perfect isn't required. Right? Just willing. Willing is what's required. It, they're coming. I know they are. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep ministering. You just say something when you see it, okay? Say, yeah, or something. Bad circumstances don't kill good seed. <laughs> you guys are so nice. You're really nice. Thank you. You know, Joseph, here he was with all this potential in him, potential in him, potential in him. And he kept going into one back circumstance over another, after another, after another. But the destiny kicked in. The seed God had planted in him, that calling, that ministry was never dead because the seed never dies. The seed will produce after its kind, it will produce. And that seed was his destiny, it was his calling, and man couldn't take it from him. It couldn't kill him, it couldn't do it. The Bible says in Mark 4, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night and gets up by day, and the seed sprouts and grows. How? He himself doesn't know. The soil produces crops, first the blade, then the head, then the maturity of the grain in the head. You see, the seed will produce. This God provides our seed. It says that in 2 Corinthians 9, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for growing and sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So we can't blame God for not knowing what to say to people. He's given us seed in our bag. If your bag is empty, maybe you're not going to the provider of the seed. When I was in grade school growing up, there were years I didn't say a word. I'm one of 10 children, I have a twin brother, and believe me, I wasn't admired in my family. 
There was a lot of us and a lot of competition, and I just couldn't rise to the occasion very well. They just all outdid me. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. But when I gave my life to Jesus, there was a boldness that came in me because I realized people are going to hell. I didn't know that before. I didn't know I was going to hell. And when I learned that really is a place and people are really going there, I opened my mouth. And I started telling people God loves you. He really doesn't want that for you. He really wants to forgive you. He really wants a relationship with you. He really has this huge desire to talk to you, to respond to you. You just have to open the door. Listen, he's knocking. He's knocking. I know you've heard it. Listen. Just quiet yourself for a minute. Turn off everything. Do you hear a knocking? That's the Lord, your maker. Let him in. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to get it together before you open it. In fact, he loves messes. Because he's the creator, he loves messes. If you get it all together, it, like Michelangelo, you know, you paint your best picture and you say, look, here's your Christmas gift. He's going to say, uh, thanks. But when you give him a, a blank canvas and paints, here's your Christmas gift, he's a creator. He's like, oh, yeah. Give me your best, God says. Give me all your craziness because that's, what, that's where I work best. That's where I get glory. That's where I can make something from nothing. I mean, look at the creation. He introduces us to himself. He says, hello, my name is Creator. God. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Look at that seed. I mean, they condemned that building. They gave it up. They, generations passed. But the great grandma had prayed and planted a seed. And it came up four generations later. The sower sows the seed. Don't give up. Next. There's that crack I was talking about. Those impossible people, those impossible places, that hard exterior that you're facing with somebody. Somebody says, get away, get away, get away. You, the sower, I'm a sower, you're a sower. The Bible says the sower sows the seed, period. We don't judge where or how. We sow. Next. Violent people, I know you guys minister to gangs and there's so many testimonies in this church. Fruit comes from those places. Next. Look at that. Discarded, how did that happen? Would you sow there? But God calls people to ministry in the craziest places. And I know you are those people. And you could stand up and say, yep. And we could have a thousand testimonies in here of all the crazy places. Next. Don't give up. Even if they're out of sight, they moved away, keep reaching out. Next. You know, at one time, that was just a discarded piece of junk in a harbor that people were embarrassed about. Now, professional photographers are photographing it because there's life. There's life where there was rust. There's life where there was no purpose. There's life where people had, were ashamed. The sower sows the seed, period. Next, 
How about the polluted places, right? Out of a gas tank, come on. Yeah, you don't know, the seed is powerful. The seed is where the power is, not the ground. The seed has the power. The seed has the life. Next. Next. Dry places, right? You guys are aware of dry places in California. <laughs> Next. Isn't that beautiful? Next. Locked hearts, forbidden places, won't go there. The sower sows the word. Last. How about that? I look at that picture and I see me. Do you see you? Those impossible places, raised in religion, unable to feel conviction because I was, I was hurt, wounded, hard, stubborn. But the seed came through. Gosh, his love breaks through, doesn't it? He does not give up on us. He sows in us. You may have forgotten the word Pastor Marco preached four Sundays ago. Don't worry. It's coming back. You'll bear fruit in that area. It will come. God isn't judging you by your ground. He wants you to give your whole heart. He wants you to have an a bag that he can fill, and he wants to put that bag in your mouth of seed to give out. Constantly giving. Don't judge the ground. You'll have a much bigger ministry if you don't look for fertile ground. There's not a lot of it around. You, you can have a giant ministry if you don't care about the ground. And you just sow, and you sow, and you sow. You know, I, 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 we as a ministry at Casa and Helena have had people come down to give us money. And they check us out online. And then they come down and they'll dig a ditch for a while. Then they check our house out, make sure it's not too fancy. Then they look at my hands and make sure I don't have diamond rings. Then they look at, I mean, they check us out. Wouldn't it just have been easier to obey God and so? <laughs> God can use your sowing to convict people as well. God can use your sowing to replenish houses. That his storehouse would be full so that they can minister. But you can be a part of any ministry you choose to be and the fruit of that ministry when you sow. You sow in faith. You sow believing. God is leading. And you know out of love he's never given up on you. Would you have sowed in your life when God did? Would you have given you what you needed in that moment? Or would you have given up on yourself? because God never does. The sower sows the word, period. could have the uh, synthesizer man back. Be seated for a little bit. What a beautiful word and what a beautiful season the way world outreach is in. You are in a season of sowing and you're also in a season of having your sowing abilities revealed to you and how powerful it is to sow. One of the things you'll always do till you die if you walk with God is increase your sowing. 
always, as long as I've known Jesus now, 51 years, he always says, so more, so more, so more. So he gives you more to sow. Praise God. Whatever you're going through and whatever stages of your life you're stuck in, just know that sowing can get you out of it. And look at that message. That is very powerful. The revelation there is mind-boggling. Very, very powerful. And I just don't feel like I should preach more about anything, but I need to minister to you. That's okay. Because we are sowing. So I want you to look around to the people next to you. And I want you to send them a blessing right now. Say, I want you to be blessed. I want God to bless you. Sow a blessing. Give a blessing to the person you're sitting next to. Say, look, anything I've ever said to you that didn't come from the Holy Spirit, I take it all back. Anything that I did that sowed a thorn in you, I take it back. Any weeds that I have sown, I take it back. Come on, say it to everybody around. Any, any weeds. If I sowed a thorn, I take it back. If I sowed a weed, I take it back. If I sowed a poisoned seed, I take it back. And say that to as many people as you can. And say, we now pray for a crop failure of all ungodly seeds. Everybody say, all the things I've sown in the flesh, we curse them all now. Dry up, die, and go away. Because that is the way God is. He is a sower. And he's teaching us to be sowers. One day you sow $10, but in a few years you'll be sowing $10,000. One day you'll sow $100,000. I know people that when I first met them could not pay their bills. Pastors, churches. And now they're sowing $500,000, $700,000 simply because they learned the principle of sowing. I told a friend of mine, you're under bondage to your limitation. You have put a limitation on yourself and your faith is crippled. And I said, why don't you raise some money and let's go build a church in Africa and you build it with your own money. We'll go do it. And he had a garage sale and whatever he did and he raised the money, thousands of dollars. And we went to Africa and I took a bunch of people with me and we built the church in 10 days for 500 people. The pastor and his wife and their four children would sleep on the slab at night, weeping. And he would weep because he said, I, I can't believe how I feel right now. I, I gave away so many things. I sold so many things to have this seed. And he sowed that seed. Do you know that within three years of that day, he started a business right when he came back. And within three years of that day, he cleared, after everything was paid, $4 million dollars. Turn to somebody and say, the sower sows the seed. Don't underestimate the power of sowing. Don't underestimate the power of giving forgiveness to someone who doesn't deserve it. Sow it. Don't underestimate the power of praying for people that have hurt you. Don't underestimate the power of putting a seed in a rock. That was powerful. Or on some abandoned ship somewhere that is rotting away. 
because there is nobody like God when it comes to what he can do with seed. There's nobody like God. What he can do with seed, if he can just find a sower. Genesis 26, 12. Isaac sowed his seed. And it says in one year, he got back 100 times what he had sowed. Never underestimate what a seed can do. Praise the Lord. You are going to be challenged in the days and months and years that are coming by God, by the Holy Spirit, to sow. There's a, a big offering coming, and the Holy Spirit is going to tell you, you know what you want to sow? That's just you with your limited thinking. And he's going to say to you, this is what I want you to sow. Because I want you to break forever and ever the poverty thinking over your family, over your children, and over your grandchildren. And that one seed that you sow is going to change the trajectory of your children and your grandchildren forever and ever and ever. My wife and I, were, had been married a, a few years, two, three years, four years maybe, something like that. And the Lord told me I was ministering, pastoring, helping pastor in a local church for, for years. And the Holy Spirit one day said, I want you to go preach all over the world. I said, okay, but we don't even know one church. Not even one. I come from South Texas, and where I come from is the border, McAllen, Brownsville. That's where I come from. You don't accidentally pass that place. You have to cross the King Ranch, which is one million acres of nothing but ranch. And you have to go from civilization down there. And I knew nobody, not even one church, not anyone. And so... My wife and I had a garage sale. We raised about $500. And, <laughs> and one day I said, we need a trailer to travel in. And, and, and I said, do you have faith for that? Because I don't have faith to go get the, the loan. She looked at me. She said, yeah, I have faith for it. So she went to the bank. <laughs> I didn't even go to the bank. I didn't have faith for it. I said, I don't have faith for it. She said, well, I have it. She went to the bank, walked in there showed the lady that we had nothing and had nothing and had nothing coming. And the lady looked at her and she said, there's something about you. I know you will never miss a payment and gave us the money and we bought a 35-foot trailer with a 1970 pickup truck with no paint and nowhere to go. But I had been sewing for 10 years, three, four, five days a week, ministering to people nonstop around the clock, and so had, uh, had she. And I know what God told me. And I was prepared. I had prepared. Nowhere to go. The trailer showed up. We didn't even drive it because we didn't know how to drive it. 35 foot trailer, fifth wheel, sitting there. We said, what do we do? We can't get in it. We'll kill people. We'll wreck everything. <laughs> Some man came by and felt sorry for us and gave us an hour of instruction. And then we practiced. We went on people's lawns. We went over, knocked down things. I mean, it was insanity. A man comes by and he says, I'm going to go to Abilene, Texas to a conference. There'll be a lot of preachers there. Why don't you come? Maybe... Maybe you'll meet somebody. Well, I didn't want to take that 70, 1970 pickup truck, no paint. So when a friend of mine had a BMW with sheepskin, brand new, it still smelled new. He said, why don't you drive this? I said, okay. <laughs> so I drive it there, and it's, all, it's preachers, you know, and they watch me drive up in the BMW, brand new, with sheepskin. They said, man, you are a man of faith. I didn't bother to correct them. I didn't say like, oh, no, it's borrowed. No, no, no. I just said, hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Man of God. You know, I didn't tell him. I never said it. The main speaker got violently sick, and I was with this fella, and he went over there, and the main speaker told him, he said, hey, you got to do two services today, the 2 o'clock and also the evening. And he said, no, I, I can't do that. That's too much. And the man turned around and went and threw up. And the man yelled at him, just do whatever you can. Figure it out. So he looked at me and he said, you got an hour to get a life. I preached to 1,200 preachers, filled my whole schedule for a year, and have never looked back. 50 years. Turn to somebody and say, the sower sows the seed, baby. And when you got the seed, it parts the waters. Hallelujah. We're going to do just a couple of things before we're done this evening. But I want you to remember what you heard tonight. Because God is never going to tell you to sow less. And if you're married to a greedy man, break that curse over him. If you're married to a man that doesn't want to tithe, break that curse over him. With love. Don't, don't say, it is el diablo. Don't, don't say, <laughs> don't, don't curse don't curse anybody. But just know, let's, let's take the ceiling of blessing off. Take it off and let it be an open heaven. And say, God, I'm going to sow like a wild person, a man of faith, a woman of faith, and I'm going to sow wherever you show me to sow, and I'm just going to do what you tell me to do. Praise God. The... Things that need to happen now. Close your eyes if you would. For the sake of privacy. Privacy. You having privacy. If you are ready to get set free. If you're here and you say, I'm ready to get set free. If you're ready to get delivered from an addiction in your life. If you say, you know, I'm addicted to prescription drugs. I'm addicted to alcohol. I, I am addicted to pornography. I'm addicted to different things in my life. And if you say, I am ready to get set free tonight, I just want you to lift your hand. Every eye is closed. Stretch your hands out. If you say, I'm ready to get set free tonight. Oh my gosh. Stretch those hands out. Let this be your deliverance night. I want you to stand to your feet if you're lifting your hands. And I want the, the prayer team to come up here to the front. All you guys that are on that prayer team. Because remember that there was a day when it was just Pastor Marco, Miss Lisa, and he had a word from God that God sowed in him and told him, you got to stop selling cars and you got to start catching fish. And he had to start with somebody, two, three people, four people. And he sowed into those people. And those turned into 50 to 100, 200, 300, now thousands. You guys that are standing up, I want you to come up here. They're going to pray for you and you're going to get set free. Just walk up to here to somebody. Just walk up here to somebody. Get that addiction broken. Get that addiction broken. While they're getting prayer, I want to minister to the rest of you. This is what I want to minister to you. They're going to just take care of business right here. But if you are in a position in your life 
where everything has been going wrong and you don't know what to do to turn it around, I want you to stand. I want you to stand to your feet. And we're going to change that for you. We're going to change that for you. Because we have the authority and the power in the Holy Spirit to do it. If you are next to all these, some of these people that are standing, just stretch your hands out towards them. And those of you that are standing right now, lift your hands like this. The authority that we have as a believer is total. So in the name of Jesus, I stop the harassment against you. In the name of Jesus, I stop the power of the devil from ruining your life and from stopping you from going forward and advancing in the Holy Spirit. From this moment on, the curses on your life are broken. And I want you to get out of your seat and walk around the church one time as a victory lap and say the momentum, the momentum is changing. The momentum is changing. The momentum is changing. Now, as they're walking around, I want those of you sitting down, stretch your hands up here to all these people. These are people with addictions. An addiction is not a cheap thing. It is a terrible and a horrible thing. But we're in a house of deliverance. We're in a house of healing. We're in a house of restoration. We're in a house of liberty. And we're in a house of freedom. So for all of you receiving prayer right now, all I want is the prayer team to simply lay their hands on your forehead. Let's say it all together in Jesus' name. Be delivered from the addiction and bondage that is in your life. We break that power over you tonight in the holy name of Jesus. Now, I'm going to confront demons now. So I want all of you that feel that demons have been messing with you to stand up. And you say, well, how do I know? You have nightmares. You have anxiety attacks. You don't have peace in your house. And we're going to cast the devil out of you right now. And we're going to cast the devils off you. So stand up and tell the devil to get out. Say, devil, get off and get out. So I'm going to begin now. Some crazy stuff might happen. Some crazy stuff. Because when people have demons in them, those demons have to come out. And when they have demons partnering with them, those demons have to detach themselves by the blood, by the blood. Everybody start saying it, by the blood. Say it over and over, just say it to everybody. By the blood, by the power of the blood. And in the name of Jesus, those demons have to flee. Now I'm going to start confronting them. By the authority of the name of Jesus, the name above every name, I now confront any demons on you and I command those demons to loose you and let you go. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command those demons to get off your body, loose your mind, 
and loose your heart. Now lift your hands like that and say, I renounce the devil. I renounce him in every way, in every situation. I cast out of my house all the demons of hell that I have invited into that house by walking in the flesh and watching things on TV that are of the devil by the blood of the lamb. Be delivered from the spirit of suicide right now. Everybody with the thoughts of suicide, get out of that seat right now. Get out of that seat. Get out of that seat right now. Walk around the church and get delivered from that suicide spirit that talks to you. Get out. Every person that has been violated at some point of your life, get out. Get out of that chair. Walk around and let God heal you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just walk around. Just walk around. Walk around. After you pray for, for these people, have them sit down. Walk around. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. By the name of Jesus. We're stepping in to a healing time right now. If you've been through a divorce, get out of that seat and walk around right now. Let Jesus heal you. Walk around right now. Let Jesus heal you. You've been through a divorce. You, you walk around right now. You, you reach out your hands as they walk by. Just reach out your hands. If you were abandoned by your father as a child, get out of that seat. If your father left you and your mother, get out of that seat. And get healed of that right now. Just walk around. Stretch your hands out towards the people. Because we are sowers and we are sowing. Some of you have had a broken heart for a long time. Someone broke your heart. Get out of that seat. Walk around and let God heal that broken heart. Don't walk around with that anymore. This is the house of healing. This is the house of wholeness. This is a house of miracles. Don't walk around with that. Come out, devils. Come out right now. Loose them and let them go by the authority of the name of Jesus. We cast out the spirit of drug addiction. We cast out the demon of murder. Murder. Get out. We cast out the spirit of perversion and uncleanness in every form that it manifests. All perverted behavior, get off the people, loose the people, and let them go. All unclean devils, come out of the people right now. You cannot hide, you cannot hide you cannot hide. I hear the Holy Ghost setting these people free. I hear the Holy Ghost telling me that some of you have a connection 
to somebody that is connected to evil and darkness and you don't know how to break free. So you're going to be you're going to be set free right now. And God's going to make a way for you to get away from those people. Cuz you're called to serve God. And you're called to be a son and a daughter of God and not connected to the kingdom of darkness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is our next and most important thing tonight. If you don't have money to live your life, that is a curse. Get out of that seat, walk around this church, and say, God, I will not live in lack, poverty, or debt. My world is about to change because I am going to become a sower, a sower, a sower, a sower, a sower, a sower. Walk around and say, I'm a sower. I'm a sower. I'm a sower. I'm a sower. Everybody say it, I'm a sower. Say it, I'm getting delivered from poverty in all of its forms and in all of its levels by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The sower sows the word. God's seed is indestructible. You cannot destroy it. It's the seed that comes from God. Hallelujah. I want you to take some time right now and start praising God. Lift your voice. Don't let the devil steal your shout. Don't let the devil steal your shout. I want you to say it all together. Tell the people around you, shout. For I have given you the city. You see, God wants you to shout before the walls crumble. Before the walls crumble is when you shout. Satan wants your shout because he is scared of the power a praise. Woo! 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 You see, the devil pays attention to the shout of a king in the camp. If he knows the king is here, he'll pack his bags and move somewhere else. There's a king in this house. 
There's a king in this house. He knows it. He knows it. We sow with a shout of victory ahead. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Him like you're already in heaven. Praise Him like you're already in heaven. Praise Him like you're already there. You're already there. You're already there. Would you give somebody a hug next to you and say it's going to be a good year? I'm going to sow the seed. I'm going to sow the seed. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Here's your pastor coming up. God bless. Come on, if you know you're free, if you know you're free. Come on, do you have any free people in the place tonight? Is there anybody tonight where the chains are falling off and you're shot of a freedom and victory? Anybody tonight that has the victory, give Jesus some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. I just feel like freedom is all through this room right now. Do you guys feel it? We just need to praise God right now. Can we, can we just praise the Lord a little bit? Tonight is a breakthrough night. Tonight's the beginning of the rest of your life. We need to give God some praise right now. Sow a seed of praise in the atmosphere in Jesus' name. Are we ready? We're going to praise tonight. Now, sometimes you got to praise, and I know it may seem like nothing has changed except my faith. Right now, we're going to pray, and we're going to praise God in faith, knowing these chains are broken in Jesus' name. Ready? Let's praise the Lord today. Come on, worship team. All right, let's put our hands together. Oh, 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 wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. Yeah, this back wall. And I've tried with all my might, but I couldn't win the fight I was slowly drifting into the night come on sing this out from now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you save my soul this way But to believe my doubts are burning Like ashes in the way So, so long So, so long to my old friends Oh, burden and bitterness You can just keep it moving Come on, now you ain't welcome here From now till I walk From now till I walk The streets of gold I'll sing of how 
here tonight you know we, we need nights like this we do you know you guys have been working so hard you guys have been pushing you guys have been serving you guys have been you guys are here going the extra mile I just pray that this refreshes you for years and years and years to come how many think we need nights like these? Even once a month. Even once a month. Now, pa Pastor Marco's ready to go. Oh!
You heard him. You heard the man. One more, Pastor? He said it. We're going we're gonna to have to do one more. Who's ready? Look, I saw some of you guys, they still look, you look cute, you know? Some of you guys are still, you know, doing the little two-step. But if we're gonna do one more, if we're gonna do one more, we need to get crazy in here for Jesus. There's nothing like the press, there's nothing like a room full of free people worshiping Jesus. Come on, let's get crazy for Jesus. Let's get loud for Jesus. Let's praise him like we never have. You ready? We ready? Here we go.
first is, you know what I just, I felt, I just felt like God was so honored. God was just, like all we did in this moment was just honor the name of Jesus as loud and as, as which much, with as much fervency and passion and fire as we could give, we gave it to him. That's what you call a sacrifice of praise. I, God, all that I have, I just gave it to you. I just, all my shout, everything, God. He just, you know, this is a level that honor. This is what honors God. From now on, church, this is the level of our worship. This is how we worship. This is how we honor God. With all of our heart, with all of our passion. When, just so you guys know, this Wednesday night, this continues. This is going to roll right into Wednesday night. It doesn't stop here. I want you to do this. When Wednesday night comes around, come in ready. Someone say, ready. ready. We're going to be ready to go to war in Jesus' name. Ready with our worship. All right. Seriously. Only one more. But this is it. But this is it. I mean, this is it. So don't ask it for no more, okay? Okay. Okay. We, we, we got my back, so we're okay. Okay, this is it. Okay. Would you guys... Uh, just, look, the, she, see, that's how my kids are, right there. That's the okay, not one. How okay, about one more? One more. Can okay. I hear one? We'll pick Can it up next Wednesday. Come on. Come on. Are you ready to worship today, tomorrow? Come on, Tuesday, Thanksgiving. Come on, Thanksgiving weekend. Come on, we're, we're Thanksgiving week. We're praising God. Come on, something shifting in our lives right now. And God inhabits the praises of his people. If we could get this praise in season and out of season, God is saying, I'll continue to show up with my power. Come on, one more time. Ready? One more time. Ready? Here we go. Excuse me for a minute, but I've got a song to sing. <laughs> it might not be on key, but it's from my heart. And no one else can tell it. Oh, what the Lord has done for me. And this might take all day. So I better start right now And it might get loud Hey! It might get loud Oh, heaven's coming down, down, down And it might get loud Hey! It might get loud Yeah! Heaven's coming down, down, down And it might get loud It might get out oh, Excuse me for a minute But I've got a song to sing It not be on key But it's from my heart And no one else can tell me what the Lord has done for me And this might take all day So I better start right now And it might get low Hey, it might get low Heaven's coming down, down, down And it might get low Hey, it might get Praise Him as loud as I want. Down, 
probably all asleep right now and and do me a favor say thank you to the kids world team give them a big hug so we love you thank you so much for giving us opportunity we love you we love you remember this if God is for you there is no one who can come against you have a great night church we'll see you Wednesday night come ready invite a friend it's gonna be on and cracking